ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय This is a proposal for a program that can benefit the whole worldwide society of devotees. The cost is negligible, easy to implement, non-political, non-controversial. Hmm? Not non-religious, no, definitely. Or you could say supra-religious, beyond the platform of ordinary mundanity. The program is that all the members of the Krishna consciousness movement should read all of Srila Prabhupada's books. Simple program. There should be a drive for that campaign. There was uh, one of Srila Prabhupada's lectures was titled Protest Against Degradation, Your Own. Janma Sata Kari Koro Para Upaka. First make your own life successful. And then work for the benefit of others. Sartak also means, means successful, it also means meaningful. That's actually, a, at least according to dictionary definition, a more accurate translation. Many devotees are reading Prabhupada's books, but I believe that many more are not. Even after many years, we see some devotees, they're initiated for many years, Brahman initiated. They never read the... They never even thought, it seems they never even thought to read all of Prabhupada's books. They don't know what's in them. They're really depriving themselves. For whatever reason it may be, there may be lack of time, uh, Shudra-like mentality in which just interested in earning, working hard, earning money, no interest in philosophy. Uh, spending time on the internet, reading websites, reading other books apart from Prabhupada's. I'm not saying that going to various websites or reading other books apart from Prabhupada's are necessarily wrong or bad. I also write and that, that's good, that's a sign of life if devotees are writing books but uh, the focus should be on Srila Prabhupada's books you can read so many other books but it's Srila Prabhupada's books that are going to change the world it's Srila Prabhupada's books which give the uh, solid understanding of Krishna consciousness by which we can uh, make positive, practical advancement. By reading those books, devotees will get strength to overcome maya. They'll get the knowledge of what maya is because you, you can't overcome an, an enemy unless you, you must know if you're facing a powerful enemy, you have to know what are, the, what are the tactics, how do they work, how does maya work. Practical directions also, just like just to give an example, it seems that many devotees in our movement nowadays don't even know that you're not supposed to eat food cooked by non-devotees, but if you read Srila Prabhupada's books, then you will know. Uh, you'll get uh, spiritual strength you get understanding of the philosophy of Krishna consciousness and of the 
mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the mission of Srila Prabhupada. We get inspiration, and then uh, the spiritual life. Sometimes devotees say they're not feeling feeling inspiration in spiritual life, or it becomes mechanical. But you'll be, you'll definitely get inspiration by reading the books of Srila Prabhupada, and you get inspiration to distribute those books and preach Krishna consciousness. And you'll feel closeness to Srila Prabhupada. We often find that devotees, they like to hear from disciples of Srila Prabhupada tell us some stories of Prabhupada. But you'll feel... uh, Closeness of uh, the closeness that comes, just like the closeness that comes from a mother to a child. Why is how is that closeness? How is that relationship? Because the mother is giving with affection, and the child is receiving with with a sense of dependence. So, Srila Prabhupada's most valuable gift is his books, which he he gives with uh, strong desire to uh, benefit everyone who reads them. So, those who read them, they they get the mercy from Srila Prabhupada, and then you can you can appreciate what he's giving to you, and you feel close to him. Srila Prabhupada said, if you want to know me, read my books. So you can know Srila Prabhupada by reading his books. Uh, It's a very simple program which will not only individually give the members strength, but will give the whole movement strength. Uh, Strength to uh, withstand Maya, to uh, take on the demoniac atheistic civilization. If you didn't know it's a demoniac atheistic civilization and that we're supposed to be uh, taking it on, then you haven't been reading Srila Prabhupada's books. <laughs> it's very clear from reading his books. Uh, it'll give the uh, strength and, and or, or the, the uh, insight that when deviations arise, which they inevitably, regularly do, uh, that devotees will recognize that and not be bewildered by that. Uh, And uh, we we often hear about putting Srila Prabhupada in the center. Well, doing so will put Srila Reading, if, if all the devotees read Srila Prabhupada's books, then that will put Srila Prabhupada in the center in the best way. You can you know, put the Vyasasan in the center, dance around it, that's very good, but putting Srila Prabhupada's instructions in the center, his, his books in the center, is the best way to keep Srila Prabhupada in the center of this movement. So, uh, individuals can take it up. Leaders can encourage followers. Who are leaders? Obviously, gurus are are leaders, those who are officially giving initiation. Uh, They can stipulate that at least those who went through the horrors of mundane education, at least they know how to read so they can, they can read Srila Prabhupada's books. They could stipulate that. Before taking initiation, you should read. I, I make that a stipulation from those who want to be uh, initiated by me into the teachings of Srila Prabhupada. They should read up to a certain level. Uh, other leaders, temple presidents, congregational leaders... Parents are leaders of their children. They can sit with their children, teach them how to read. The young children teach them how to read by reading Srila Prabhupada's books. Uh, 
Anyone who takes it up is a leader. Everyone can encourage everyone else to read those books. And as more and more start to do so, it will have a snowball effect. You don't know what that means because you don't have snowballs in Bhimavaram, but if you, anyway, it's, uh, what, what will we say, an ever-increasing effect. Geometric progression. Something like that. So, uh, it's, it's just a matter of deciding to do so. And then making a habit of doing so daily. And it's good also to fix a time that I should read all of Srila Prabhupada's books within a certain time. Otherwise, uh, Maya al- always suggests other things that are more important than we can do, just like you know, feeding the dog or other things. That I, I, I saw here there's, at the back, there's, you know, there's this big rich man with a huge house. He's serving his dog, exactly what Prabhupada said. Instead of serving God, he should be doing puja at this time of the morning. His forefathers must have been doing puja. But instead, he's, instead of serving God, he's serving his dog. Bringing the food, bringing the water, like this. So there's always something more important to do, but there isn't actually. Actually, there is nothing more important. And once you read the books, you'll you'll understand there is nothing more important, or anything of any importance actually, than Krishna consciousness. Everything else is. Superficial. Once you start, you won't, you won't want to stop. I've had that experience with many devotees. They, they, I tell them you have to read up to the second canto of Bhagavatam if you want to get initiated. And they have so many excuses, and then when they sometimes after years they eventually agree to do it, and then when they start, they say, "Oh, it's so wonderful!" And then they want to go on and read more and more. It. it it just gives us a completely different dimension in our spiritual life. Otherwise, if we don't know why we're doing what we're doing, then we must be doing it on the basis of sentiment, which is, which is not substantial. It means we can't advance very clearly. We can't advance very properly if we're not interested in the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Uh, <coughs> So, uh, another point is that Srila Prabhupada's disciples are mostly, well, they're all in, in the last phase of their lifespan unless they live to be an exception, exceptionally long lives. So, the next generation of devotees is coming in and it'll be your duty to, of course, most of you here uh, haven't made, haven't come to that level of commitment yet. But those of you who have, it'll be your duty to transmit the parampara. What are you going to give? If you don't know what the teachings of the parampara have, or you don't have a very, you, you haven't very deeply gone into them, you haven't yourself gone to the trouble of becoming acquainted with the teachings of the Parampara as received through the founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, founder Acharya Visva, then what are you going to give others? If you only have some light sentiments, that's all you can give. And then you then you won't be a, a strong link in the Parampara. Then the Parampara, then everything will become very weak. So, uh, we can usher in this qu- a quiet revolution. I said the cost is negligible. That means all you have to do is buy Prabhupada's books. Hopefully, uh, all the devotees, they should have all of Prabhupada's books anyway. If you don't get them, every initiated devotee should have at least one full set of all of Srila Prabhupada's books in his home, if he's living in a home. Uh, this can only be auspicious. Like nothing bad can come from it. Only 
Only uh, the most auspiciousness can come from it. Also, uh, listening to Srila Prabhupada's lectures now, they're, they're widely available, cheaply, uh, in one DVD they all come, or two? In three DVDs, so you can get a set of DVDs of all of Srila Prabhupada's lectures, conversations uh, that have been recorded. So that's something I'm promoting wherever I go. Take the, take this and listen to this. It's uh, then you'll hear how Srila Prabhupada was preaching. How uh, you'll, you'll hear in Srila Prabhupada's voice his the sense of urgency to communicate Krishna consciousness. So this is my suggestion. Can make it a campaign. This is more for this is more for the world of Iskon than well it's for all you who are present here also. That's the best advice I can give. Interestingly, we see that uh, nowadays, at, at least among Indians, when people come newly to our movement, the first thing we try to do is to get them to chant. We give them beads and tell them to chant. But we don't see that Prabhupada did that, actually. He, he tried, he spoke to them the philosophy, and then he asked them to read the books and associate. Of course, it's not that he banned them from chanting, but he wanted people to understand the teachings primarily of Bhagavad Gita and then obviously the other books also. So, 